Hey guys, my name is Rachel and welcome back to Oxheart Gardening. This is our week eight garden tour and as you can see the garden has completely gotten away from me. It has gone wild. <laughs> you guys are gonna love seeing everything that's growing so let's get into it. So for those of you who are new here, welcome. As I said, my name is Rachel and this is my garden. So I am in South Carolina. This is zone 7B. I am in the upstate. It is hot and humid here. And I put out a new garden tour every week. So if you want to keep up with the garden, go ahead and subscribe and you can see the updates every week on Wednesdays. So I'm just going to touch on this experimental front section real quick. It is not doing so hot. And I think as soon as these plants run their course, this area is going to be a raised bed. I had thought that I had a baby butternut somewhere in here. There it is, but it definitely did not get pollinated, is not going to grow up into a big squash. And if I don't see any fruit set, I probably won't keep these plants much longer. However, they are breeding grounds for squash bugs you can see the eggs um, and for that reason if they're not setting fruit there's no need for me to keep them around any longer than absolutely necessary the whole idea behind that section of garden was to see what would happen if i left all of the like natural well existing <laughs> at least environment in place and just dug the holes to plant the plants and that way uh, all of the bugs and all those things that were already living in the ground wouldn't get killed by tilling. Um, however, as you will see, this is the saddest part of my garden and this area over here in front of me that y'all are about to see is way better. So I think I'm just going to uh, call this experiment um, not a failure, but finished and I am not going to repeat that because I think it doesn't work all that well. I think it probably got choked out by the grass and everything. And while there is a little bit of a something to creating a an ecosystem where everything can live with your plants, I think in this case they were just overcrowded and couldn't get enough nutrients for themselves and compete with the natural vegetation and whatnot. Alright, so I said you guys would probably get to see a sunflower this week and as you can see that one at the top has not quite opened up yet. However, we do have the very first sunflower right here, complete with a little bee on it. Ah, oh, so pretty. So soon. This will be just a beautiful ray of sunshine full of sunflowers in the garden. So as far as tomatoes go, I have a few that are just starting to ripen. And the reason I've just picked this one, even though it is not fully ripe, is the last tomato that I tried to let ripen on the vine got eaten like immediately. Like I did get to it fast enough. And so in this case, I would rather get to it and have a whole edible fruit that ripens off the vine than to have a bug filled inedible fruit. So I think I'm gonna try and catch my fruit just a little early. Maybe I'll let a couple more get extra ripe when they're higher up. These first ones to ripen are always really close to the ground um, and so are more of a target for pests. So we'll see how it goes, but that's why I am starting to pick my tomatoes early. So these tomatoes right in front of me are Amish paste tomatoes. I would say this is a very typical shape for them and a lot of them are chunkier because they have fused together. This one is absolutely massive actually. That doesn't even look like a paste tomato anymore. But yeah, something like this is about what you expect from an Amish paste tomato. And these are just looking absolutely lovely. So oh my gosh, there's another giant one. Don't even have to grow giant heirlooms to get big tomatoes, I guess. Wow. And so on this side of the tea post, these are San Marzono Lungo number two. They are a little cuter with little ridges in them. And these are also paste tomatoes because I plan on mostly using tomatoes for sauce this year. 
Look, just another <laughs> giant tomato. And some more blushing beauties. Now I could, on camera, just twist these off for you, but I'm gonna go get my clippers because it's definitely better for the plant if you don't rip the tomatoes off, especially when they're not quite fully ripe like this. Now if we go ahead and walk down the second row on the left side of the tomatoes, I have in front of me my eggplant. So these are alternating Nagasaki Long and Antigua eggplants, and you can see I have some fruits. Last time I didn't really have any Nagasaki Long fruits to show you, and this time I have these giant things. So they are really coming in quick on these plants. I have, I think, an Antigua somewhere around here to show you. There it is, that beautiful purple stripey thing. And many more flowers coming on, and little baby fruits. First thing I'm gonna make is like eggplant parmesan, but I am open to all the eggplant recipes because, well, <laughs> I'm about to have a lot of them. So as we come back past the eggplants, I have the pepper patch and they are getting kind of out of control at this point. And I have lots and lots of cute little fruits to show you. Some of them are ripening, like these uh, Oda, which were the earliest to start putting on peppers. You can see some of those are starting to turn orange and will eventually become red when they are ready. I haven't actually tried these yet. Um, I picked one yesterday that I need to try and see. And because I didn't get around to supporting my plants, some of them are actively laying down, but <laughs> they're also actively laden with huge peppers. And I think I'll just leave them be as these ripen because I don't want to break my plant. They are straining under the weight of some absolutely huge peppers. Some of them are about to be ready. Look at the beautiful marigolds and the sunflowers running along the right all the way to the back. Oh, so pretty. Oh, and I almost forgot to show you. I put in a cute little path for the garden running from the steps to the sidewalk. And also, this is garden cat Kada. She's my younger black cat. She is about a year and a half old by now. Will you check out <laughs> this whole thing? I just noticed this whole thing is one basil plant. This is cinnamon basil. And I've kind of let it go to flower because I can't possibly use it all. But it smells amazing, highly recommend. So to the left of that basil right in front of me, this is an entire row of bush beans. We have Blue Lake at the front and then Purple Teepee further on. And I think I may have planted too many beans, guys, because I was harvesting from here the other day. Whoop. And I swear, I picked enough beans to serve like a family of 18. <laughs> it was kind of nuts. And if you look, you can see they're just producing more. And that is what bean plants do. They keep on producing, especially if you pick before the seeds are formed, which is kind of what you want to do with bush bean types because otherwise they get hard. And unless you're growing for shelling beans, then they're not going to be very tender to eat as pods. Just look at that. Bush bean, bush bean, bush bean. All over. And more purple flowers. More baby beans coming on. This is nuts, guys. Look at all of these. This is my favorite part. This is the arch laid in with noodle beans. Looking wild. Can y'all see them hanging? Isn't that so wild? These are Chinese red long noodle beans. And noodle bean just pretty much about describes it. This is about the size that I would pick them at, but if you leave them, they will get fatter and they will make actual beans inside these pods. And these can be cooked a lot like normal green beans, um, except you should definitely not steam them 
because they will get mushy and gross. But you can saute them or you could uh, oven roast them. I actually haven't tried a lot of things with them. Last year I pickled them and uh, those turned out really, really good. And they're so pretty because you can coil them up in the jars. Um, but I really like growing these and usually I end up eating them like normal green beans. Gosh, just look at all of these though. It's like a little alien plant. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I missed picking this one the other day. This is what it looks like when it starts getting a little too big. Once it starts getting fat like this, it gets a little more tough, um, but still definitely very edible at this size. So on my second arch are the cucumbers and you can see they don't look very happy but there are a lot of flowers on them and I've actually been harvesting a lot of cucumbers. Now I just gotta gently step over the pumpkin that is in my way and wow okay right there in front of me yet another cucumber. I swear I came here yesterday and there was not any cucumbers big enough to pick and here it is. You will always miss a cucumber near the bottom of the vine that gets way too big. There's another one right in there. I don't think I see any others on here. So I can't even really walk back here anymore. Um, these are the two rows of tomatoes that I tried to put up. Oh, cute. Look at him on the little zinnia. Oh, anyways, okay. So these two rows of tomatoes I trellised up using the Florida weave method and they have outgrown that and I haven't been able to get to them to really um, prune them and pull them back up because I allowed this pumpkin to just uh, grow in the middle of the path. Wow, from up here, the view never gets old. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I grew that. Oh my god, you guys, look. Kate is right there. Oh, she is so cute. Okay, so the biggest pumpkin I have right now is this one. And it is definitely bigger than the pumpkin I remember saving seeds from from the store. The one that I saved seeds for was like your your regular pie sized pumpkin, except it was white. Um, so I'm not really sure what kind of pumpkin I have on my hands now. It's definitely a pumpkin. It probably just crossed with something when uh, whatever farmer was growing it. And you can kind of see from this side why I'm letting the vines grow where they may, because right here at the base where the plants originally started, vine borers have had their way with the plants and I know that the more vines I let grow, the more roots they put down, the better chance I have of actually getting fruit off of these plants. So that is why my tomato patch is taken up by pumpkin vines. It's not just that I'm a lazy gardener, it is also that I'm trying to actually get some fruit. Um, however, I am also a little bit of a lazy gardener. Interestingly, this pumpkin stem seems to be kind of healing itself. Like you see, it's just kind of getting really thick and that white, I, I don't know, I would assume it looks like scar tissue. You can definitely still see the damage, but this plant, like overall the leaves next to the stem are actually looking fine. So I'm guessing that it's kind of healing itself and standing up to the pest pressure. My neighbor told me that the corn laid down in a storm the other day, but when I came out it was standing back up and I can't think of anybody who would have come and stood it back up for me. So that's pretty cool. The corn is still looking great. Oh man, and I just noticed, I think these are my first tassels. That's cool. They look a lot different than I thought they would. I honestly don't know how I'm going to get in there harvest tomatoes when they're ready. Oh man, what have I done? I'm just gonna harvest some noodle beans real quick and then we'll go to the other section of garden. The 
Look at these things. Ah. So here is the container garden. And if you can see, there's little bits of red. I have ripe peppers. Now these ones in particular, I tried one of these last night. They are bell shaped. They are one of the ones that the label fell off of. Um, and I thought that they were gonna be sweet and they are in fact very spicy. Um, so yeah, I have no idea what these are. And they're different from what these are, which are also a bell type that I have no idea what they are. The Buena Mulata peppers are finally ripening. So they actually start out this purple color and then they turn to that orange color. And finally they get to be this red color when they're ready. And so this one we can actually pick. And now the struggle is to keep this separate from my cayennes because this looks very much like a cayenne once it's fully ripe. These are some actual cayennes and you can see somewhat similar, although I guess these are a little more orangey purple. So hopefully there won't be any confusion in the pantry. My Tabasco plant is not ripening any peppers yet but it looks like that'll start happening very soon. You can see it's pretty loaded down with those yellow, light green colored peppers. Whew, it is hot out there. I am sweating. But um, lastly, we have this update on my single seed challenge. And the cool thing is that I've noticed it is growing again. You can see right in there, the pretty fresh new growth. And it's also got still a few of these ripe peppers on it that I haven't pulled off. Um, but I think it's getting ready to start putting on its second flush. So it'll grow up a little bit and then put on an entirely new set of peppers. Alrighty guys, and that is all I have for you today. Check in next Wednesday, remember, for the week, what is it, nine garden tour. Uh, and I will see you then. But until next time, I wish you happy gardening.